Boston will soon house migrants in the vacant facility that used to house veterans. Karin Hajar from the Boston Globe Editorial Board joins me. Karin, what's going on in Boston with this? What's the reaction? Well, there's certainly some outrage, uh, but when it comes to the veterans issue particularly, it's a bit misplaced. No veterans are getting moved. This is a building that is slated for demolition and a parking lot is planned thereafter. So uh, no veterans are getting moved in this situation, but it does point to the dire crisis the state has that it has to put migrants from overflowing shelters into an old dilapidated building. Okay, it's a, not a serious issue at this moment because they're veterans, I got it. Now, you have an op-ed, quote, unhappy with Trump, unhappy with Biden, end quote. And I believe you spoke with Nikki Haley supporters. Who are they voting for in November? Nikki Haley supporters are still making up their minds and, and that's across all parties. So I think that when you are looking at a group of independents, Republicans and Democrats, this spells a disaster. People want to say that this spells disaster for Trump, but I think this also spells a disaster for Biden. Um, and the Biden campaign is really going to have to do a lot of work to win over those Democrats that went for Nikki Haley because some of them were saying this is a protest vote, but when I spoke to them at the polls or when I called those same New Hampshire voters up last week to report this piece, they're still saying they're unhappy with Biden. They might have rather voted for Nikki Haley or somebody else. Uh, they look at the border. They name the president's age as issues. And they're just not happy with the way the country's running. So that's, that's a problem for the president. Well, how many people do you think would just stay home because they don't like either Trump or Biden? I think that's becoming a really big problem. This election is, elections are usually a competition to gain voters, and I think that this one's going to be one to just keep them. Um, both parties are going to have to gear up for really big turnout efforts, and I think the Biden administration in particular and that campaign is going to have a really big problem because the young voters that usually do that legwork for them are also unhappy, whether it's Gaza or different climate issues. So I think that the uphill battle here is really going to be for the Biden campaign to ask the people who do that campaigning and the people that usually turn out in big numbers for Democrats to come out again when they're deeply unhappy on all sides. I, I'm just going to throw this at you. If the election were today in the city of Boston, who wins, Trump or Biden? Well, I think that uh, I think Biden will win in, in Boston, but I'm not so sure in other swing states like Pennsylvania and Michigan, which he flipped in 2020. Right now, polls show that he's either tied or trailing in those states. So Boston's kind of a lost cause for the Republicans, I would say, right now, maybe in the future. But um, it's those swing states that he really needs. It would be a sensation at the Boston Globe, would it not, if Trump won Boston? There you go. <laughs> uh, that is a sensation. Uh, Karin, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thanks now, for having me on. Sure.